new episode of Serial for September 2023. So as usual, every month I, I go back on the photos I took or I edited and try to describe what kind of camera, because it's gonna, there's going to be lots of analog film, um, digital, uh, lots of stuff, foveon sensors and, and lots of lenses as usual. But um, yeah, let's directly start with uh, black and white film, um, a very special film from this French company, uh, Washi. Um, with a leader film that's 12th ISO. It's a film named A, like the letter A. Uh, and that was during a, a trip in Iceland. I, I'm doing this new series which is named Tracks. Um, it's part of this coming up uh, video um, where I was going to see the end. Everybody goes for the beginning of a volcano and that's for the end of a volcano. And really interesting rendering with this film. Um, the first picture on the left, there was some light leak. I believe it's uh, the cartridge which was leaky. It's a little bit more... Uh, Washi makes those more custom-made uh, cartridges. I'm not sure that's the cause, but it's probably me when I used it. But I actually like the light leak how it came out. So uh, interesting rendering, but very interesting film. Very contrasty. It was used for titles and subtitles. Um, very sl very slow actually with those 12 ISO, but very interesting. Um, here we're going to something more traditional uh, with my Lake ISL2, it's digital. That was at the International Photo Festival in Alten, center of Switzerland between Zurich and Bern. Uh, on the left, that's um, uh, Evgenia Abugeva, this incredible photographer um, that was presenting her, her photos, her work, and um, her book now is come out, but uh, she was presenting this book to come out uh, in the days uh, following the presentation. Uh, incredible presentation, incredible work. And basically, I was wandering around the festival uh, with some captures of the good ambiance. I definitely recommend it. There's also a museum of photography there. Here's the photos. Uh, during the festival, there's a few uh, places where you can see the pictures, including outside. And the picture on the left, that's uh, the tree garden uh, where Evgenia's photos were exhibited. Um, super settings and really a nice ambiance, a very cute town and a few captures here. Again, details of the city. Um, oh, I, I didn't say, the, the lens I'm using here, it's, it's actually for a future video presentation. It's the TTR, she's in 100mm f2.8, which is named Bubble Bokeh, but when you don't look for the bokeh, and do more traditional images. It's actually pretty interesting, pretty good. Lots of character, quite old old school, but very nice rendering. Again, same lens, same camera. Uh, on the left, that's a Galicia bar in Alton, a really cool bar. And on the right, uh, detail of the city uh, while going from one uh, place to another for to see the exhibitions. Here are two last pictures. Could be basically a little bit anywhere, but that's in Alton, still the same equipment, the TTR and lens and and the SL2. Um, going to something very different, that's film. It's actually, uh, I messed up with the uh, camera I didn't know, and that was for, if you haven't seen it, for the video, this new series named Tracks, um, the Barillet uh, episode, where I was using for the first time the Rolex Flex SL2000F camera. And one of the magazines is kind of easily jammable if you don't activate it in the proper way and I didn't know that so I was uh, that's the results of me rewinding the film getting it out and bringing it back in trying to relocate it at the right place once I've understood the problem with it with the cartridge uh, but I like I like the result here again for those who haven't seen the video the tracks video about Barry yet um, it, basically, when I was winding the film, it was not really winding correctly, so I had those multi-exposure -ex shots, uh, but not very precise, and I really liked the result, so here it is, um, a memorable uh, moment uh, in my work last month. Going to digital now, um, for quite some while now I've been interested in the Foveon sensors from Sigma. Um, basically, I've talked about it quite a few times in the past. Uh, um, here it's with the uh, Sigma DP2 Merrill camera. Um, with, it's basically a 50 millimeter equivalent uh, on the sensor size. Um, Non-removable lens, very nice combination. And that's in, for those who know Reykjavik, it's the Bröntgen bar where 
the party can be pretty wild. Slow, the Fovians are not very sensitive. This one's not very sensitive to low light, so long exposures. But actually, I really like the rendering. The colors are very organic. So really, I like the result. I like the ambiance that came out. Uh, kind of experimental, but um, a video is coming up uh, for sure where I'll be going through the whole spectrum of the cameras Sigma have come out uh, with uh, yet with this sensor. Here we're going back to film. Um, that's with the Contax T. Uh, the video about the camera came out not long ago, so hopefully you've seen it and enjoyed it. And that's using the Ferrania Orto 50 film. It's uh, a film that's kind of similar to uh, uh, P30 from Ferrania, which I really like. Uh, there's more silver content than usual. Um, these two photos are from Geneva, in Switzerland. Uh, quite contrasty because um, here, as we can see in the next two pictures, uh, besides the high silver content, there's a very strong contrast, and it's also linked to the fact it doesn't see red. This film doesn't see red. Um, so, very interesting result. I'll definitely use it in the future for a specific project. It's got lots of character. I kind of prefer the P30, but and also I'm quite biased also because I, I like the P30, but um, really interesting film, this Orto 50 uh, film, 50 ISO, uh, obviously. Here on the left, the uh, last picture was a contact scene, the Orto 50. I liked uh, it was flash. I liked how, how it came out. Um, and on the right, the two pictures, the more vertical pictures. Uh, I'm a big fan of the Hasselblad x pan camera, and, and that's part of my Icelandic work, using Cine Still XX at 100 ISO. Um, yeah, as you can see, not as contrasty, really great film, uh, more a finer grain, uh, more, uh, how would I say, uh, it's more sensitive to different uh, shades of gray, it's more subtle, let's say it like this. Here again, uh, expand, the Hasselblad expand, um, during my trip to the lava field and to go see, that was for the tracks, um, episode on this, the end of a volcano and that's using a relatively new film. I'm quite slow testing my new films so Lomography came out a few months back with the Lomochrome Color 92 um, and that's Lomochrome Color 92. Um, that's the lava field from the eruption from 2022. It's still hot. We can see some smokes a little bit down in the back but I really like the rendering of this film. Here again, the same film. As some of you might know, the X-Pan, you can choose the format. can be panoramic or more classical, uh, 2436 um, ratio. Uh, and yeah, same film, the Lomochrome 92. Very grainy, but very interesting uh, rendering of colors. And that's in Reykjavik. Very unoriginal photos, quite touristy. The Maritime, Maritime Museum on the left and the Harpa uh, Opera in the center of the city on the right. And as we can see, the, this film is really interesting. It's blue hues. It's kind of coldish in its rendering of colors, but really interesting. Um, here again, with this uh, seagull, as you can see, the sky really comes out very dramatic uh, using this film. And on the right, uh, a small detail from the city I liked. Uh, and yeah, same equipment. Um, I was talking before about the Fovion sensor, and that's with another camera with a Fovion sensor. That's the Sigma SD Quattro H. It's an APS-H format sensor, so it's probably the largest they ever made. It's slightly bigger than APS-C. Uh, it's actually the same format as the Leica M8. And here it's an interchangeable lens camera. Uh, and it's with uh, an M42 adapter with a Jupiter 9 85mm f 2.0 lens. Um, that's a lens from 1948, uh, Sonar Krasnogorsk. It was made in Soviet, Soviet Union and it's based on the Carl Zeiss uh, sonar formula. Very interesting, lots of character. Um, and it's pretty uh, open, so here are two pictures in low light where I'm testing the Fovion sensors, which are not very well uh, equipped to deal low lights, but here it's probably the best uh, in its generations and even so, it's very grainy. The rendering of the colors is interesting. And yeah, um, this the Fovion H, the DP2, the Merrill series, un up until the Merrill series, 
the sensitivity to low lights was pretty bad, but here the Merrill H has another, it's not a Bayerian grid, but the three layers, basically the top layer, which is blues, and the red and the green, or the green and the red. Uh, the blue layer has a higher definition than the two underlying la uh, layers. So the colors are supposed to be not as precise, hard to say, but I'll, I'll be doing a video soon about those Fovion sensors. Here, that's the Lake ISL2 with the TTR season 100mm f2.8 lens again. Uh, that was during the opening of the festival uh, Open Your Eyes in Zurich. A really cool moment uh, and yeah, a detail of a room on the left. Uh, really interesting lens to use uh, in diverse situations, not only for its bokeh, but for simply for its rendering quality. Uh, it's a festival, actually. You, you might want to go see it. It should be still on. It's outside. You have uh, lots of different sites where they talk about the problems, um, about our environment. Uh, it's uh, about the UN initiative uh, and how we might help the future and, and open your eyes uh, to those problems. Um, here are two pictures, film, using a, f a Chinese film, which is the Lucky 100 Super GBR film. I don't know how long it was expired, but it's definitely expired. You still can find it not too expensive uh, online. I'm not sure because I didn't find any info on the GBR uh, naming of my film, but I believe it's the same as the one you can find online now. Um, and the rendering of the colors is really incredible. Uh, very <laughs> weird. Um, no, that definitely you can see it here. And as you can see, there's those small red dots that seem like oxidation. Um, and yeah, I really liked using it here with the Voigtlander Vito C camera, which is a, which has this, this great lens. Here again on the left, we can see a little bit better those oxidation points. I'm not sure what picture I took on the left here. I don't know if I messed up and moved at the moment I took the picture or I didn't focus right, but I like I like what came out of it. So it's probably a badly focused. Sometimes it's one of those non range finder viewfinder cameras so i probably went to infinity instead uh, well the opposite went to the most proximal focus uh, for a landscape and that's what came out of it but and i really liked also combining it with this picture on the right that's actually a picture i messed up with uh, a polaroid spectra film uh, which uh, battery was defective and so it didn't roll out correctly from the camera and so the chemistry didn't go well, as you can see, but the result is super interesting. I, I did two like this. Um, Spectrofilm is not made anymore, so I felt pretty bad on on the moment, but uh, I'll be correcting the, the power or lack of the battery uh, in some way. But, but uh, here I have two weird photos, only one I'm showing you today. Um, one experiment also I wanted to do, here are the two first pictures, this test, I'm not a big fan, well, I'm not very experienced, I'm going to say it differently, I'm not very experienced with uh, wide-angle lenses, um, and I'm very curious about two lenses, which is this one, the Hector 28mm f6.3 from 1935. It's a five-element in three-group lens from Leica, uh, with a maximum aperture of 6.3, but super compact, and here it's used on a relatively old digital camera, the M240 from Leica, so it's an M uh, format camera, uh, and it was in Milan. Uh, and it was the, I've been testing this lens for a long time and wanted to compare it to another lens. I'll come to it a little later. And as you can see, the sensor of the M240 is not really, doesn't have this uh, micro array of lenses like on the SL2, so you have this uh, uh, magenta distortion of the colors in the periphery where the rays, light rays, come really almost horizontally on the sensor. But so lots of vignetting, uh, distortion on the borders uh, for the color, but a really super interesting uh, rendering of this uh, vintage lens. Here again in Milan, here I'm going to finish with Milan, basically. Um, details of my, my street photography. I'll be doing a specific video about it with more uh, details. And I'll be comparing it to those two photos are taken with the lens that came and replaced it uh, from 1955 to 1963. That's the Sumaron 28mm f5.6, the original. 
there was a re-edition uh, not a few years back uh, and it's a six element uh, in four groups uh, optical formula and yeah it's kind of a mythical uh, lens was replaced by the Elmer 28 mm f2.8 in 63 but really interesting rendering uh, again on the m240 as you can see the, there's less of this uh, um, color effect in the borders so the light rays probably come in more vertically even so there still is but really interesting rendering and um, here's just two photos even in low light so it's an old camera so the exposure times or the grain or both are not going to be very adequate but um, but really nice rendering uh, from the Summeron lens original Summeron lens here is the same equipment with uh, more light, uh, great geometry, and, and really lots of character. So Milan was interesting in that way for me to be able to have all the photos I needed for the vi video about uh, Sumeron 28 against Hector 28 lenses, uh, vintage lenses, um, which will be interesting. Um, anyhow, hopefully that was entertaining. Um, if you have questions, comments, whatever, don't hesitate to comment below or or send a voice message for the for the podcasts and and yeah catch you next time <laughs>